Hey there and welcome to today's edition of Let's Reason Together. Today's message and reflection is do not fret. These are the opening words of Psalm 37, which means do not worry. Hmm. It is actually hard to tell someone not to worry, especially when you can evidence your worry and or anxiety. Um, you have proof about why you should worry. For example, you worry when you see evil prevail, when people successfully carry out their wicked schemes, when people succeed in their deceitful ways. Actually, the psalm puts it this way, that the wicked lie in wait for the righteous, intent on putting Putting them to death. There are different forms of putting you to death. People hating you, you know, or jealous of your faith in Christ, so much so that they plot an attack on your life. And then you worry when you get to know that behind the smiles that people give you is an imagined success of the fall you will have after they have successfully stabbed you at the back. So there are these things, but all these things do not go unnoticed. They will perish. But we also don't worry only about what the wicked people do to the righteous. We do worry about tomorrow, about not being able to be where we want to be, about not getting what we desire to have, right? I don't know of anyone who does not worry. Even the Bible characters we read about, they worried, right? David, the author of this psalm, did suffer worry, but he learned how to get out of worry, which is why he also wrote so he could teach us to get out of worry. Worry overwhelms the mind. Um, one of the ways in which I get out of worry are the words of Jesus when Jesus said that which of you can add an hour to their life when you worry. Wow, just the sound of that phrase lifts up a whole load of worry from me because then it teaches me that worry uh, takes from me than adding to me. We have to learn to take on the yoke of Christ. Jesus says to receive his yoke, which is light, finding rest in his leading. And so this particular Psalm, Psalm 37 verse 5, says to commit our ways to God and trust in him. For if we do that, then he will act. Now, I want us to zero on two particular points. Why should we um, give God an unwavering trust and how should we trust in him? The first reason why we should trust in God is because God is the creator of the universe. The Bible says all things come from him. And so he knows better. You know, whatever he tells us, whatever instructions he gives us, we should hear from him. We should trust him. The second reason why we should trust God is because the Bible says that he is the one and only true God, meaning anything outside of God is a lie. God is the essence of truth, right? His word is truth. He is truth. Only way we can access this truth is through his son, Jesus Christ, whom he sent to pay the price for our sin and restore the relationship that we shared with God before sin came in. And so Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ, who is the exact image of God, is an embodiment of that truth and is life itself. And so if we want to access the truth that God is, we need to believe in Jesus Christ and accept Jesus Christ. Another reason why we should trust him is the Bible says he does not lie. Man will lie to you anytime, any day, in order to have his way, in order to get what they want, in order to mislead you, you know, but God never lies. Another reason why we should trust in God is because God is so faithful. The fact that I can boast today that I am a righteous person is due to God's faithfulness to his promise. He did promise that those who believe in his son, Jesus Christ, shall be saved. I believe in his son, Jesus Christ, and so I believe I am saved. And that is true because God does not lie. If you believe in his son, Jesus Christ, you have been saved and you are called righteous because God has said it so. He says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful to forgive us our sin. And so God is that 
faithful second thessalonians says that he is faithful he 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 is able to establish us and guard us against the evil one how faithful god is god is reliable i don't know of anyone whom i can rely on 100 percent but we can depend on god for everything the bible says that god has given us all of what we need for life and godliness and in order to access these blessings we need to trust in him committing our whole life to him another reason why we should trust god is because god is all powerful i want to trust someone whom nothing and no one can overpower and that someone is god alone god is um all loving unconditional love is what God gives to us, right? We want to love someone who does not have mood swings, right? Love us today and give us faces tomorrow. No, God is steadfast in his love toward mankind and so we want to trust such a god another reason is god never changes jesus is the same yesterday today and forever we sing a song unchangeable god his nature his essence his attributes he never changes so we want to trust a god who is unshakable who is unchangeable so these are the reasons why we need to fully trust in god now how do we trust in this god psalm 37 verse 4 tells us to delight in him to delight in someone is to take interest in that person you know make that person our companion right investing in a relationship with god is going to be very beneficial for you and i you see there is beauty in reciprocity unrestricted reciprocity we need to get serious in building a relationship with God and so it requires you know intentionally spending time quiet time with God reading your Bible because God's Word is God you need to read your Bible to get accustomed to God's voice and his leading verse 5 tells us to commit our ways to God trust in him and he will act to commit our ways to God is to commit everything about our lives to him, meaning that we have to be God conscious in every little thing that we do. The Bible says, do everything as unto the Lord, right? Whatever we do, make sure that you bring God into the matter. We don't leave God apart. And then when we find tr ourselves in trouble, that's when we go to him. No, trust in him, which means, in other words, to focus on him, have our eyes fixed on him, set our minds on him, right, in everything that we do. And when we do these things, he will now act. Why? Because we are one-minded with him. Remember, let this mind of Christ be in you always. When we have the mind of Christ, we are one. And he acts upon that oneness that we share this is easier said than done but it's something that we have to cultivate and so it requires intentionality i say it all the time dedication and commitment and then verse 7 tells us to be still before the lord wait patiently on him but this is not a passive waiting but an active waiting right acting upon the instructions of god god will tell us give us the wisdom on when to act and what to do and then we work on that and so do not fret people of god because the salvation of the righteous comes from the lord and the lord god is our stronghold in time of trouble he delivers all those who seek refuge in him this can be hard to do may the lord strengthen us in our weight in our walk with him and may he help us through his wisdom to commit all of our ways to him and to trust in him unwaveringly god bless you all